Well, good evening and welcome to another broadcast of the Renew Covenant Fellowship. I am your host, Brother David Jones. We're, we're doing a little different tonight. We're going to be broadcasting right from the office and uh, hoping that it'll work. Um, have never tried it this way, and so we'll see uh, how it works. Uh, I need your, your feedback. If you're able to hear me, let me know. I see that we have one on. Uh, if you're able to hear me, you're able to see me, you're able to understand what's going on, let me know because we've never done it this way before, but uh, wanted to try to do it this direction. And uh, I can't see who's on. Miss Sharon, can you see who's on? Anybody popping up there? I see we have one. It could be you. That's right. It could it could be you. That's right. So anyway, uh, folks are coming on and getting ready to go. And we welcome you to another broadcast of the Renew Covenant Fellowship. And we hope the Lord richly blesses you tonight as we get into the Word. We're going to be continuing in our series of Psalm 9, but we're going to use that as a springboard, if you will, uh, to get into a topic uh, that we must up here before the judgment seat. So Miss Mickey says that she can hear us and she can see us. So hello and welcome to the broadcast. Share this to your page right now and invite others to come and to be a part of the of the broadcast. And um, we'll try to get as many on as we can tonight. Of course, we do uh, rebroadcast this on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Renewed Covenant Fellowship. And uh, so if you are not able to watch it in its entirety on the Facebook side, then you're, uh, you're able to uh, be able to go onto our YouTube channel, Renewed Covenant Fellowship, and you can watch any of our teachings at that time. Good. I'm glad folks can see us, glad folks can hear us, and I'm glad that things are working well so far. We praise the Father for the technology that we've been given to operate with, and uh, we hope that uh, Father richly blesses us tonight as we get into the Word. Like I said, we're going to be back in Psalm chapter number 9, and we're going to be talking about uh, appearing before the judgment seat. And uh, so uh, you just uh, guys just keep uh, keep inviting folks and keep in, encouraging people to come and be a part uh, of the broadcast tonight. Um, okay, good. Shalom Aleichem there, Brother Keith. Uh, I'm, I've got my little my little uh, uh, monitor over here on the side on my screen, and I can see the the things that come up. I can see the comments that come up, but then I realize I got to roll it. I got to scroll it with my with my mouse in order to get them to all come up. So uh, anyway, uh, 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 invite others to come. Share this to your page, and I know that Father will greatly bless you. But before we get started, there's just a few announcements we do have fellowship tomorrow at uh, 2 o'clock uh, here at our home, and we'll be having Sabbath fellowship as always. And, of course, uh, tonight today is preparation day, preparing for Sabbath tomorrow, and we hope that you have uh, done all your prep work and are ready for uh, the Shabbat time, the Sabbath time, time of rest and time of uh, reflection upon our Creator and our Father, and also a time for uh, convocation and getting together to spend time in the Word, and to uh, uh, gather together for fellowship. And so that's exactly what we'll be doing tomorrow uh, at 2 o'clock. Um, we're going to pray and ask the Father's blessing on the, uh, on the meeting tonight. We do want to continue to pray for uh, those that have been on our prayer list uh, for the last several weeks. Uh, those that are part of our fellowship, you know what those prayer, uh, what's on that prayer list. Uh, I do ask you to continue to pray for us, pray for our ministry, pray for those that are continuing to be affected by um, the agenda that seems to be being trans, uh, transformed and transpired right before our eyes uh, in our society and uh, those that are being deceived and those that are, are physically affected uh, by uh, different illnesses and things like that. So we want to continue to pray for those that are struggling. Pray for those that are financially hindered, those that have been uh, have been affected uh, with uh, uh, financial downturns, and uh, continue to pray for Father's will to be done in their life also. Um, and then if you have a prayer request you'd like to mention, then please send it to us, and we'll be glad to make sure to uh, mention that in prayer. Also, uh, if you like our email address, it's renewedcovenantfellowship at gmail.com. Our website is renewedcovenantfellowship.com. 
and uh, so you're welcome to uh, use any of those avenues in order to make contact with us also Facebook and YouTube so let's pray tonight and ask the Father's blessing on the meeting Father we do love you we thank you for your goodness and mercy thank you for this time that we have to get into your word Father, we pray, may your word not return void, but that it would accomplish exactly what it set out to do. Father, we confess tonight that we are frail, and Father, we are helpless without your spirit and without your touch. Father, we ask you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, Jesus Christ, our Savior, Father, that you would uh, hear our prayer tonight, that you would send the Holy Spirit to minister to our hearts, to draw uh, draw people into hearing the word, Father, Father, and to follow the word, um, Father, that's not about me, but Father, it is about you. And we ask you that we would have our focus upon you, not upon some human teacher, but Father, our focus is upon you and your word. We ask you now that you would hear the requests of prayer, those that uh, are praying. Father, while I'm praying, I pray that you'll hear our prayers tonight. And Father, that uh, you would do according to your will. Give us wisdom, discernment, and understanding. Help us, Father, to know what your word is and how to rightly divide the word of truth. Minister to our hearts now and do for us what needs to be done. Save that soul that's nearest destruction. Father, we ask you to continue to draw others out from tradition and false teaching into the truth of your word. We love you and thank you for your goodness and mercy. Have your will and way, I pray. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, let's get right into the Bible study. We're going to look in Psalm chapter number 9. And I'm going to read the entire chapter, but then we're going to look right into um, verses 7 and 8 is going to be our focus tonight as we're on the topic of we must all appear. And so in Psalm chapter number 9, I will praise thee, O Yahweh, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. O thou enemy, destructions are come to a perpetual end, and thou hast destroyed cities. Their memorial is perished with them, but Yahweh shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Yahweh also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Yahweh, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Sing praises to Yahweh, which dwelleth in Zion. Declare among the people his doings. When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them, he forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh, consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me, thou that liftest me up from the gates of death that I may show forth all thy praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in thy salvation. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into the grave and all the nations that forget Elohim. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Yahweh, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Yahweh, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Now this is definitely a psalm of judgment. I want us to focus on verse number 7 and verse number 8. It says, but Yahweh shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Hold your finger there in the book of Psalms and go to 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and look in verses 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5 and verses 10 and 11. 
2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 and 11, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Messiah, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto Elohim, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. And when we consider what the word, what the word says, it teaches us here plainly that there is going to be a time of judgment. Paul writes there in Corinthians that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Messiah to, in order to, uh, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he had done, whether it be good or whether he bad. Probably one of the most terrifying things in my estimation of future events would be this instance right here where we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Yahweh, Yeshua, Messiah, and we're going to be judged based upon the things that we did, whether good or bad, after we became uh, in covenant with him. And Paul says, knowing therefore the terror of Yahweh, we persuade men. Now, now if you're watching and you're, and you're not worried about the judgment, uh, then you're a bigger person than I am. Because this is not going to be one of those times where it's going to be a party. This is going to be one of those times where there's going to be much weeping and there's going to be much sorrow. Because he's going to bring to light all the hidden things. The things that we did in the darkness and in the, uh, in the cover. And the things that we did behind the scenes. Um, not only the things we did in front, but also the things that we've done uh, in behind. If you'll notice, if you'll notice a lot of people, they, they want to say that, that, uh, Yeshua or Yahweh has done away with the law or Jesus has done away with the law. Um, and so therefore, you know, all we're going to be judged on and we're going to be judged on basically whether we've been good people, you know, whether we followed the moral law. My question to someone that talks about the moral law is what parts of the law are immoral? But yet, if you look in Matthew chapter number 5, you'll see that Yeshua himself makes reference to the law and the fact that he doesn't do away with it, that we are going to be judged by the law that Yahweh has, has, uh, has given us. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill or to preach fully. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass... One jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And so we're going to be judged based upon the law that is set in place. If you stand before a judge or you go to court or anything like that, and you're going to be judged based upon the law that's been set in place by our legislative branch, by our, um, our congressmen or our representatives. Uh, if they've uh, if they create a law, or if the, your city council has set a law uh, uh, in the in your town or in your municipality, and you break that law, uh, then you're going to stand before the judge, and there is a certain criteria based upon that law that you're going to be judged by. You're going to be judged as whether you broke that law or whether you you did not break that law. It's the same way with Yahweh. We're going to be judged based upon His law. We're not going to be judged based upon Baptist doctrine. We're not going to be judged based upon what the Catholic Church says. We're not going to be based, well, we're not going to be judged based upon what any preacher or teacher would say, what any rabbi would say. We're going to be judged based upon what thus saith the Lord. And we're going to be based upon his laws and his rules and his guidelines, his Torah, not by our own standards and not by what we think, but about what he has said. And, and if, if, if you'll notice uh, uh, in, the, in the book of Ecclesiastes, well, I, actually, let's go to Ezekiel chapter number 18. Ezekiel chapter number 18, you'll see that uh, uh, the prophet is speaking, to, of course, to the uh, house of Israel, the northern tribes. But it's a, it's a very telling verse of scripture, Ezekiel chapter number 18 and verse number 30. It says, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, Israel, everyone according to his ways, everyone according to his ways, 
saith my sovereign Yahweh, repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions so iniquity or lawlessness shall not be your ruin. They're going to be judged according to his ways. Well, what are our ways supposed to be? Our ways are supposed to be the Father's ways, and we're supposed to follow after his ways, his instructions, his guidelines, his directions, uh, not our own. Uh, in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse number 13 and 14, we see that Solomon, in the, at the end of his life, he uh, got some things right, and he writes uh, in the end of, of uh, Ecclesiastes, the very last two verses of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14, it says, Let us hear the conclusion of the matter, of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole of man. For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now, I don't know about you, but that does, that does cause me to um, be frightened. That does concern me because I know there's going to be things that's going to be brought up that I'm not going to want to hear again. Yeah, I have no idea if it's going to be a big screen, if it's going to be one of the big big video screen. Or I have no idea. I don't, I don't know if it's going to be in a, in a in a private room, a private setting, or if it's going to be open to all the world to see. I don't know. All I know is what Scripture says, that, that our whole conclusion, the conclusion of the whole matter, is to fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole of man. For Elohim shall bring Every work into judgment. Every work into judgment. Go back to Psalm. Uh, go back to our Psalm, and you can see what the psalmist writes there in Psalm chapter number nine, where he says, "But Yahweh shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, and he shall judge the world in righteousness." What is righteousness? What is righteousness, Miss Sharon? What's what's righteousness? Psalm one nineteen one forty two. Is that, is that what righteousness is? Am I, am I quoting it right? Psalm 119, 142. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law, thy Torah, is truth. He says there, back in, back in Ecclesiastes, chapter number 12, For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. The psalmist writes in Psalm 9 that in verse number 8, he shall judge the world in righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is his Torah. He will judge by his Torah. He will judge by his standards, not by our standards. He will judge by his decrees, not by our decrees. He will judge by his laws, not by our our laws. He'll judge by his understanding, not by our understanding. And that's why it's important that we take heed to what the psalmist is writing here, that Yahweh shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment, for he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Torah is righteousness, Brother Keith. That's exactly right. Torah is righteousness. And so when we look at how he will judge, he will judge based upon his Torah, based upon his righteousness and how he sees fit. We've got this idea that we're going to be judged based upon what our preacher says to do. Well, you can be judged based upon what our doctrine is or, or what we believe or how we, we uh, see the Bible. That's not what Scripture tells us. That's not what Scripture reveals. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. And then he shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Very simple, very simple, very clear. The Torah is righteousness. Now, I want you to look over to Psalm chapter number 50 and verses 3 through 6. Psalm chapter number 50. I was trying to put together a PowerPoint for this, but I just really couldn't get my, couldn't get my head together as to how I wanted to do this. So, 
Psalm chapter number 50 and verse number 3 through 6. I really enjoy sitting at my desk being able to do this. You know, I hope that the video really turns out well. It's looking like it's got some delay, and I'm not sure if it's, you know, if it's working right or not. So can you tell, Ms. Sharon, if it's, if it's got a delay or if it's working right or anything? Can you tell? Does it look okay? Yeah, yeah it looks okay. Okay. She don't want to talk because she may be heard on Facebook. <laughs> Psalm 50, verse number 3 says, Our Elohim shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very tempestuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Now understand this too. There's going to be judgment for the unrighteous and the righteous. There will be judgment for the, the lost and the saved. Of course, Revelation talks about the great white throne judgment. But there will be a judgment of the righteous and the unrighteous. He says there, verse 4, He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Not, not all humans are his people. Only those who are in covenant with him are his people. Verse 5, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hey, guess what? Our sacrifice, our sacrifice was made for covenant by Yeshua. He is our sacrifice. He is the one who has made sacrifice for us that we could be in covenant. So Miss Mickey said it seems to be working okay. So that so that's that's good. Uh Gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Well, we don't sacrifice at a temple because, well, we're not a part of the Aaronic priesthood. Okay, that was part of the Aaronic priesthood. But our sacrifice is Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the one who, who, who uh, is a sacrifice for us. He has become our Passover. He's become our sacrifice and our propitiation. And so therefore, we are in covenant with Yahweh by the sacrifice of Yeshua HaMashiach. And so therefore, we as covenant people being covenanted together with Yahweh through Yeshua, Jesus Christ, those of you that don't know his, his real name, those are, who are in covenant with him, you are his people. And being his people, you are no longer Gentiles, but you are Israel grafted in. And when we, we talk about that, a lot of people, they get all bent out of shape and say, no, 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 you got, you got separation between Israel and the church. But you got to remember the church is Israel. You've got national Israel, but then you've got spiritual Israel. And so we need to understand and remember that, that Yeshua is our sacrifice that brings the two into one. Okay? Um, uh, yes, brother, brother Joshua. Yeah, determining the greatest and the least. There'll be a separation of the sheep and goat nations, and so, so, uh, and 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 also those who are greatest in the kingdom and those who are least in the kingdom. We go back and we see that verse of scripture that that Yeshua talked about there in Matthew chapter five. I'm I I, I appreciate you bringing that up, uh, brother. Uh, Matthew chapter five and verse number number nineteen says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven, but whosoever shall do and shall teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no wise, in no case, enter into the kingdom of heaven. Leads me to believe that maybe scribes and Pharisees are not going to be entering into the kingdom of heaven. Maybe I'm wrong there. But nevertheless, we see here uh, in Psalm 50, verse 5, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heaven shall declare his righteousness. There's that word again. His righteousness for Elohim is judge himself. Elohim is judge himself. Now, I know we could get in, into, the, into the conversation and the argument about, you know, Yeshua uh, being before the judgment seat of, of Messiah. I believe it's one and the same because right here in this verse of Scripture, he's judging his people. This is judging his people. 
there in verse 4, 5, and 6. Gather together my saints together unto me, those that make covenant with me by sacrifice, so that he may judge his people. Verse number 4. And so judgment is coming. There is going to be a reckoning day. There's a time of judgment, a time of balancing things out, setting the record straight, so to speak. I, I'm glad and thankful for Yeshua who has given us uh, uh, eternal life through his shed blood and has paid our sin debt. He has uh, paid the sacrifice for our sin debt where we were bound by the law of sin and death. Now we do not have to face that. But I do believe that we will have to give an account for our works. We'll have to give an account for the things that we've done in our body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Scripture is very clear about that, that we're going to have to face that. And it's something that we should be very uh, seriously considering at all times, that knowing how we should walk and live and act in accordance to our life and how the Father has given us instructions. We should follow and walk by those instructions on a daily basis knowing the terror uh, of, of Yahweh, as like Paul said there in 2 Corinthians. Knowing the terror of, of Yahweh, we persuade others. And so sometimes I think, Ms. Sharon, we need to persuade ourselves too. We need to persuade ourselves and be reminded on a daily basis of this, this coming event. You know, I know, I, I know prophecy preachers and a lot of people that are making speculations about things that are going on in our society right now. They're making random speculations and they're making prophecy declarations and they're, you know, they're looking at the, uh, the political landscape and they're looking at, uh, uh, you know, the presidential, uh, election and all the things going on. And they try to attribute the things going on in America to, to prophecy. But it's like I told someone tonight, um, prophecy centered around Israel and centered around Yahweh. Okay. And so when we consider what this thing is about judgment, we need to be reminded that, yeah, there's going to be some tribulation and there's going to be some, some justice brought out to the wicked one and to the evil one, but there's some justice coming to us too. There's some reckoning and some, some things that we're going to have to basically give an account of uh, and be held accountable for our actions. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like in a job. You know, we're held accountable to how we do our job and whether we do our job correctly, we're held accountable to our management and held accountable to our boss uh, and our upper management and the company in which we work for. It's the same way. We're going to be held accountable for the one that we claim to be in covenant with. We're going to be held accountable to uh, our creator, uh, the, uh, the Lord Almighty, uh, and we're going to have to give an account according to his standard, not our standard. Um, look over at Acts chapter number 17 and verse number 31. I, I, th th this entire message, well, not the entire message. I'm not going to preach the entire message. But this is what I preached my mother's funeral a year, a little over a year ago, May of 2019. And um, I think she would have been pleased with it. This is... She, she, knew, she knew the Father. She knew, she knew the Lord. So Acts 17 and verse number 31, the Bible says, Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. There's that word again. There's that word, judging in righteousness. And what did, the, what did we determine righteousness was? Brother Keith's got it up there on the screen. Torah is righteousness. So he's going to be judging the world based upon his Torah. If we, if we have this idea that the law is done away with, then what in the world is Yahweh going to judge the world with if he's done away with his law? That just don't make good sense. That just don't make good sense. So we need to keep in mind what the Father says and what Scripture says. Acts 17, 31. Let's continue to read. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he, had, he hath raised him from the dead. And so we know that judgment is going to be based upon righteousness, not upon man's ideas, but upon what thus saith Yahweh. Very, very clear. Now, look in Hebrews chapter number 9. Um, 
I, now, please don't get me wrong when I say this. I, I've never experienced this, but I, I just have to go with what the Bible says. And, and I know there's a lot of people that come on and do these videos about that they've died and, you know, they've seen the other side and, you know, they, they've uh, uh, experienced life after death or they went to heaven and then they came back or they went to hell and then they came back. And, and, and uh, I, I'm, I'm just real leery of stuff like that. I just really am just... Uh, I don't mean to be critical. I'm just I'm just very cautious when I see stuff like that because of the Bible says in Hebrews chapter number nine, verse number twenty-seven uh, says, uh, "And as is it, appo it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment." Now let me read that one more time. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The judgment, the judgment, the judgment. And so I can't help but think that I believe I'll, I believe I'll stick with what the Bible says, amen? I believe I'll go with God, and I believe I'll go with what the Scripture says that it's appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. The judgment of what? Judgment in righteousness. Righteous judgment. Righteous judgment. That's what, uh, that's what the writer there in Acts 17 said. Righteous judgment. Let me read it to you one more time. Acts 17, 31. <clears throat> I'll read it to you one more time. Because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Judge who? The world. Not only his saints. We read that about the saints there in Psalm chapter number 50 being judged. But also the world will be judged. You know, there, 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 there's, there's over 250, I think it's 256 times the word judgment is found in our English Bible. And we could spend, we could spend hour upon hour upon hour talking about the judgment. Uh, but friends, I, I'm, I'm here to tell you, it is important how we conduct ourselves and how we live our lives because one day we shall face our Creator and we shall face uh, the Lord Almighty. And we're going to have to give an account of the things that we've done, whether good or whether bad. And we're going to have to, we're going to have to answer for some things. We're going to ha have to answer for every idle word. We're going to have to answer for every action, every evil deed, every misstep. We're going to have to have to give an account of that. And I can just imagine the conversation that's, that's going to go on, you know, as I stand before uh, before my creator and with my head hung, hung down. And, and, and I mean, I can just imagine uh, Yeshua asking, well, well, why did you do this? You know, and then, I, then I'm not going to have an answer. You know, I'm going to try to come up with, I can get, just imagine myself coming up with every excuse possible. Well, there's not going to be any excuses. No, no excuse is going to fly. Did I break God's law? Yes. Am I guilty of breaking God's law? Yes. So therefore, am I going to have to answer that? Yes. Am I going to have to give an account for that? Yes. Yes, I am. And I, and I don't think I'll have an answer to give. It's kind of like the Pharisee and the publican. Remember the story of the, the Pharisee and the publican? Uh, Yeshua was teaching and he talked about the Pharisee and the publican. The Pharisee lifted up his eyes toward heaven and he, and, and he, he proclaimed that how wonderful he was and he fasts three times a week and he tithes of all that he has and 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 he's not like this uh uh not like this uh this publican over here but then yeshua turns to the uh, turns and uh, and puts his focus on the publican and he said the publican wouldn't even lift up his eyes to heaven but he smote his breast and said uh, have mercy upon me a sinner we're going to be literally throwing ourselves on the mercy of of uh, elohim's court Brother Keith said one of the meanings of the Hebrew word Elohim is judge. That's exactly right. He is the great judge. He is the only judge. He is the only one. He's the only one that can save, and he's the only one that can judge. We don't. We have no judge. I, I, yesterday, uh, someone someone uh, uh, thought I overheard them saying some profanity and some bad words. Of course, they know I'm a preacher, and you know they know we have a ministry, and. And so, you know, they're saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm, but, you know, and the and first thing I said was, hey, I'm not your judge. I'm not your judge. I said, you need to be concerned as to who else heard it. 
and and they said, "Yep, yep, you're you're exactly right." And I, you know, we're not each other's judge. You know, I can't judge you, and I can't point fingers at you because if I point fingers at you, I got three others pointing back at me. You know, what's that verse of scripture, brother Keith? You had to help help me out because it just came to my mind. What's that? What's that verse of scripture about? Um, uh, don't try to get the the stick, and, and, and I'm paraphrasing. Don't don't seek to get the stick out of your brother's eye without getting the telephone pole out of your own. You know, the beam. You know, the moat. You try to get the moat out of your brother's eye, but then but then you got a beam stuck in yours. I can't remember what verse of scripture that is. Uh, it's in one of the gospels, but that's what Yeshua says. And so we need to understand that we're all going to be we're all going to face judgment, and we're going to face a time of of uh, of um, uh, rectification, if you will, that we're going to have to set some things straight. And, and of course, you know there are those that that would that would teach and preach. Well, you know we have no sin, and you know we're without sin, and you know and and I I understand that, but you know let's see what uh, John has to say about that very thing there in First John. Chapter number one, um, where he says there in First John chapter number one and verse number five, he says, "This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that Elohim is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth." So there's there's right there's the first standard. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. We're the liars and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another in the blood of Yeshua Messiah, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we are going to have to answer for some things. We're going to have to stand before before the Father. We're going to have to stand before Yeshua and have to... Uh, Answer some things. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That w If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Yeshua Messiah the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if, we keep his commandments. Remember what the what the final matter is or what the whole matter is? Fear Elohim and keep his commandments for this is the whole of man. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of Elohim perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. And so it's very important, very important to understand that we're going to be held accountable for our actions. And it's why we must maintain a character, a, a godly character. And we must pay attention to the way that we walk because we're going to be, uh, have to give an account for our ways. Let's go, back and, let's go back and look at that in Ecclesiastes 12 again and we'll see uh, how um, Solomon writes at the end of that in Ecclesiastes 12. The last thing he says, for Elohim shall bring every work into judgment. Every work into judgment. Fine tooth comb. Fine tooth comb. With every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Brother Keith found the verse for me, Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 5. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Matthew chapter number 7 and verse number 5. It's good to have some... Good to have some help when we're doing this. Uh, you can throw up some verses and things and do do the research while I keep talking. Amen. Matthew chapter seven and verse number five. Thou hypocrite. Well, let, let me let me go let me go back. Uh, j verse one. Judge not or condemn not that you be not condemned. For with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged, and with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye be the little stick or the little little sliver in your brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, the, a beam is in thine own eye. 
Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. So we have to be careful. You know, I'm not, I'm not your judge. I'm not your judge. I have no, no right to judge you, and I have no authority to judge you, because if I judge you, I'm going to have to judge you based upon what I know, and what I know is flawed. Amen? So we need to understand that we will face judgment. There will be a time of reckoning, a time where we will have to give an account for the things done in our body, whether good or whether they be evil. Let's go back, let's go back again to our psalm and look at what our psalm says. Psalm chapter number 9. Psalm chapter number 9. I'm really enjoying going through the psalms, and I appreciate you that are joining us to going through with us. Psalm chapter number 9 and verse number 7. But Yahweh shall endure forever. He hath prepared his throne for judgment. He shall judge the world in righteousness. He shall minister judgment to the people in uprightness. Yahweh also, I like this, will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Yahweh, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. Remember what the psalmist wrote there in Psalm 50 we read earlier? That he shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice in the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for Elohim is judge himself. I like the fact that we have a refuge. It goes back to one of the verses that we read over in 1 John about Yeshua being our propitiation. The propitiation for our sins and not for ours, but for, for the sins of the whole world. That he is our refuge in a time of trouble. That we can run to him even though we know that we're, that we're going to be chastised. We know we're going to be corrected. And, and you need to be thankful uh, hello, Buck and Carrie. Shabbat Shalom to you guys too. Uh, you know that that um, you should be thankful when Yahweh takes you to the woodshed. I never like getting a spanking. Okay, I, I just never I never liked it. It was not one of my favorite things. I remember one time my mother gave me a choice of a whipping or grounding. You ground it for two weeks or get a whipping. And that's the first time in my life I ever asked for a whipping. I told her, I said, I'll take the whooping. She said, you're grounded. So, so it really, it really didn't, didn't pan out on the good end. I would have took a beating instead of having to be grounded for two weeks. But nevertheless, it didn't work. Never enjoyed getting a spanking. But, you know, uh, if I got a spanking from a grandfather or from a grandmother, it's, it's because they love me and they wanted me to do right. And um, we should be thankful when the Father takes us to the woodshed. We should be thankful when the Father corrects us and, and shows us where we've done wrong because the father and mother don't love their child if they're not going to correct them and make them go the right direction and go the right way. And, and if you're not being corrected and you're not being chastised and you're not being disciplined, the Bible says you're a bastard and not a son. You've never been born again and you're not in covenant. Well, I would much rather be, be chastised and, and corrected than to be forgot about and left, left out to the wilderness. The Bible is very clear that Yahweh will be a refuge in times of trouble. Up at the beginning there, there at the, uh, in, in Psalm 9, it says there in verse number 4, For thou hast maintained my right and my cause, thou sattest in the throne, judging right. Thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put, on, put out their name forever and ever. We know that Yahweh is a refuge. We know that Yahweh is, is a, a shelter in the time of storm, if you will. And it's important for us to understand that even though we're going to face judgment and we're going to face uh, an accountability, we know that we can go to the Father and we know that he will be our refuge in the time of trouble. We know that he will be our refuge in the day of calamity. It says in verse 12, When he maketh inquisition for blood, he remembereth them. 
He remembered them. He forgetteth not the cry of the humble. Have mercy upon me, O Yahweh. Consider my trouble, which I suffer of them that hate me, thou that liftest me up from the gates of death. All the day that we're going to have to stand before the Father, we'll cry out for mercy. We should cry out for mercy every day. We should cry out for mercy every day. Walk in his grace, walk in his truth, walk in his light, and cry out for mercy every day. Day The heathen are sunk down, verse 15, in the pit that they made, in the net which they hid, is their own foot taken. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. There again, word judgment. He is known by the judgment which he executed because the Bible says that he judges in righteousness. Righteousness. I saw a, I saw a great meme today on Facebook. It talked about um, I think Charles Spurgeon said it. Said it's not so much that Yahweh hated Esau, but that he could love Jacob. Listen, it's not so much that Yahweh will destroy the heathen and the wicked, but that he would give us grace. That's the that's the greatest miracle, and that's the greatest blessing of all. Not that he's gonna judge the world and not because he's going to set the record straight and not because he's going to put the wicked where they belong. No, 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 no. No, the greatest thing is the fact that he would show us mercy. We who have been enlightened, we who have been brought into covenant, we who have been saved by the almighty grace of, of the almighty Elohim. That's the greatest miracle and that's the greatest thing. Not so much that the world's going to be judged, but so much that he loved us. Loved us that he would give himself that we could have eternal life. That's the greatest thing. And that is the thing that we should focus on. Instead of focusing on the judgment of the world, we should focus on the fact that he chooses to love us and chooses us as his own. And that we are his People, his people. Now, I made the mention earlier that we, let, let me go back to that Psalm. Let me go back to that Psalm 50. I'll go back to that Psalm 50 just, just for a minute. Psalm 50 in verse number <clears throat> four, five, and six. He shall call to the heavens from above to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay? Those who have made covenant with me by sacrifice. Now, I want you to go over to the book of Ephesians. We've talked about this before, but there may be some that have never seen this before and, and have never heard this. I, uh, I made this, uh, was talking to someone tonight about this very thing, that we are not the heathen. The word, the word Gentile means heathen, okay? And we've read in the, the different scriptures tonight how he's going to destroy the heathen. Uh, go ahead and make your way over to Ephesians chapter number 2. I'm going to go back here while you're turning to Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to go back and I'm going to read the part in, in Psalm 9 where he says there uh, about the heathen being destroyed. Uh, there in verse number 4, uh, verse 5, thou hast rebuked the heathen, thou hast destroyed the wicked, thou hast put out their name forever and ever. Okay? So, when you talk about heathens and wicked and Gentiles, those are ones that are not in covenant. Okay? Paul gives a great explanation of this in Ephesians chapter number 2. About who it is that is Elohim's people who it is that is in covenant. Remember what that scripture said there back in Psalm chapter number 50. Those gather my saints together unto me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Okay? So, as I said before, our covenant in our lifetime is through Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross of Calvary. Okay? So that is our sacrifice. And that's who we claim uh, for our eternal salvation. But Paul writes in Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 2, we'll begin reading in verse number 10. He says, for we are his workmanship. 
We are his work. Now he's talking to the church at Ephesus, which were converted Gentiles. Okay? For we are his workmanship, verse 10, created in Messiah Yeshua. Okay? All right, hold on. What scripture was what, Miss Carrie? Ephesians 2 or Psalm 50? I will wait for your response. We'll do the Jeopardy music. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> so I, I'm bouncing back and forth between Psalm 9, Psalm 50, and Ephesians 2. Okay? So Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua, unto good works, which Yahweh hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, when you look back at Psalm 50, Psalm 50 in verse number 5, Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Remember, we said that sacrifice was Yeshua. Go back to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. Wherefore, remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, you being in, pa in time past Gentiles in the flesh. Oh, that's in chapter nine. That's in chapter nine, Psalm chapter nine, verses four, four and five, I believe it is. So Ephesians two, eleven. Wherefore remember that you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So the circumcision party or the ones who fall out of the circumcision, that would be the Jews of the day, okay, Jews of the day. And then Gentiles would be the one, and, and you go back and you look at Scripture, and I'm going to go get into all, all the teaching on it. You go back and look into the Scriptures, you'll see that the Gentiles referred to the northern tribes, the northern tribes of Israel, the ten scattered tribes in the diaspora or the dispersion. They were the Gentiles, okay? And Paul says, you being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, you are called uncircumcision. Thank you, Brother Josh. Um, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time, what time? Time past, verse 11, verse 12, that in that time you were without Messiah, without Messiah, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. All right, that's a negative connotation, okay? Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, illegal aliens. You can't vote. You're not supposed to be able to vote. You're not supposed to be able to get uh, uh, benefits. You're not supposed to have benefits as a citizen. You're an illegal alien, okay? Aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, all right? Not a citizen, but an alien. Strangers from the covenants. Remember, the covenants were given to Israel, not, not the world. Yahweh didn't make a covenant with the world, made a covenant with Israel. Strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without Elohim in the world. But now in Messiah Yeshua, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh or brought close by the blood of Messiah. There's that sacrifice from Psalm 50, okay? There's that covenant, okay? For he is our peace who hath made both one, made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. So he took two and made one. Okay? And that he might reconcile both unto Elohim, both, Jew and Gentile, northern tribe, southern tribe. That's right, Brother Keith. If you don't use your shoe of the door and try to jump the wall, you're a trespasser and an illegal alien. That's exactly right. 
I believe that comes from John chapter number 10 about the, the door, the door to the sheepfold. I believe that's John chapter number 10. <clears throat> All right, we're going to continue in Ephesians. That he might reconcile, both, verse number 16, that he might reconcile both unto Elohim in one body by the cross or by the stake, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. Remember what Yeshua did. Yeshua said in the Gospels, I've come but to the lost house of Israel. So he preached to those who were afar off. Remember the woman at the well, John chapter number four, Samaritan woman at the well. All right. That was part, she was part of the, part of the tribe, part of the 10 tribes that were dispersed into, uh, uh, and, and mixed with the, with the other races. And came and preached, verse 17, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. So he preached not only peace to those who are afar off and out of the house of Israel, but he also preached peace to those who are nigh, that was the Jews that, uh, that were there, those living in uh, Jerusalem at the time. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Both. Now therefore, verse number 19, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners. Back on verse number 11, you were, or verse number 12, you were strangers and foreigners, aliens. Verse 19, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of Elohim. What does Psalm 50 say? Gather my saints, Psalm 50, verse 5, gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Hallelujah, we have made covenant with him through Yeshua's sacrifice. Covenant with him. And he will judge us in righteousness. And he will be a righteous and just judge. Verse number 20 of Ephesians 2. Oh, let me face verse 19. Now, therefore, you're no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of Elohim, and we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yeshua Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto the holy temple in the master, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of Elohim through the Spirit. We are his saints. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's look back at Psalm 9 and let's bring this thing to a close. Verse 16 of, verse 15 of Psalm 9, the heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made in the net which they hid is their own foot taken. Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into the grave. That word there is uh, sheol. I know our English Bible says hell, but it's Sheol, it's the grave, it's the netherworld. The wicked shall be turned into the grave and all the nations that forget Elohim. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, the expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Yahweh, let not man prevail, let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Yahweh, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. And that word nations, I believe, and I'd have to look it up, but I believe the word nations there refers to the Gentiles. I believe that is the word for goyim. Somebody that's got a concordance handy, you can pull that up for me and verify that, if you will. But I believe the word nations there, 1471 in, well, I've, I've got my concordance right here. Let me just look. 1471, I want to make sure that I'm right. 1471, 1471, Goyi, another name for Goyim, a Gentile. Sheol means the abode of departed spirits of humanity. That's exactly right. That's right. That is correct. That is what the word Sheol is. 
Put them in fear, O Yahweh, that the nations, that the goyim, that the Gentiles may know themselves but to be but men. Verse 17, we could read it like this. The wicked shall be turned into the grave and all the Gentiles that forget Elohim. And so if you are in covenant with Yahweh, you are no longer a Gentile. You're a saint. Fellow citizens with the saints and the household of Elohim. But we will face judgment one day. We will have to stand before our maker, stand before our creator, stand before our savior to give an account of the things in which we've done, whether good or whether bad. I'll read Ecclesiastes one more time and then we're going to close in a word of prayer. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear Elohim and keep his commandments, for this is the whole of man. For Elohim shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Father, in Yeshua's name, we thank you for the word tonight. We thank you for the scriptures. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to share the word tonight. We pray, Father, for those that will be watching and listening, those that have been on live, Father, and those that will watch uh, uh, in the delayed broadcast, whether on YouTube or whether uh, on our Facebook page. Father, we pray in Yeshua's name that you would hear our prayer and that you would go before this video and this teaching that your word would not return unto thee void, but that it would accomplish exactly what it set out to do, and that souls would be saved and lives would be changed as a result of this teaching. Father, it's not about me, but it is all about you. And we ask you, Father, that you'd help us to maintain that focus upon you. Help us as we continue to prepare, finish out the day today, and prepare for Sabbath tomorrow that you would be honored and glorified by all that we say and do. Thank you for these who have been on, on the broadcast tonight. We ask you, Father, that uh, your word would speak to their heart and they too would find comfort and find solace in your truth. Thank you, Father, for your righteousness. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your Torah. Thank you for your love and kindness. Move now in our midst. Continue to give us grace and mercy, wisdom and understanding. And we'll thank you and praise you in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. May the Lord richly bless you is our prayer. If you're in the Salisbury, North Carolina area, please stop by and see us. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you be a part of our of our fellowship. Two o'clock tomorrow on Saturday at our home. And uh, if you'd like to get more information, you can private message me or you can go to our, our website, renewedcovenantfellowship.com, renewedcovenantfellowship.com. You can check that out and you can find out all the things going on. We got Sukkot coming up, got some, the fall feasts are coming up. So we're starting to make some arrangements and making plans. And so we'll look forward to seeing you. Thank you, brother Josh. Thank you for joining us. May the father richly bless you is our prayer. We love you. Thank you for joining us and we'll see you next time. Amen. Shabbat Shalom.